All right, I'm Sovereign Sage, and I tried to do a weapon inscription translation a little bit ago, and I kind of felt like I screwed it up in a way because the kanji, I translated one a little wrong because it's hard for me to kind of talk about one and then keep switching to each one that I'm talking about, and I was trying to go through them quickly because I kind of felt like I was running out of time, so I kind of tried to like rush myself. And by doing that, I kind of screwed up the placement that I was on. And there, I went ahead, like I fell behind, like I, I went like, I said two, but I stayed where I was at. I didn't change it on the game up here while I was talking. So I went ahead and I got myself confused because I had went ahead. So I'm going to try to go a little slower with these and try not to move my cursor up here unless I'm actually done talking about the character that I'm on. Uh, because where I'm sitting at, the kanji symbols look a little tiny to me, and I'm having to, like, squint, and my vision's kind of blurry, and it's not great. And I think that's what screwed me up last time, to be honest with you. So we're gonna try to go a little slower through this. Not, I'm not gonna really rush at all. So, the first character, we're gonna start... I'm not going in orders the way the order I would like to go to. I'm gonna just do this shit randomly, Okay. Um, so the first one we are on is for Ashikaga Yoshiteru. He, I actually like him. He's cool. So his personal inscription is called Tranquility. So I want you to pay attention to the two little symbols at the bottom left. That's actually the symbol that I'm on, if you look here. Um, you see how it changes? So the little symbols, the two little symbols on the little picture down there on the left. You can, I'm going to put those symbols in the description, so if you're reading the description on this video right now, um, I want you to look for that kanji. So, it's Ashikaga Yoshiteru, and then it's going to have the kanji, and it's going to say Tranquility. And next to that, it's going to say what it does. So basically, the roulette, which appears during Kaiten no To, which is one of his R2 special skills, uh, and with the long press on the 8th hit, so by the 8th hit, if you hold the button down, I think, uh, of his normal combo, will now have an equal distribution of colors. So, and the rotation speed will be decreased, like it'll slow down. In addition, though, the duration of beneficial effects will be extended, while negative ones won't last as long. So he has this R2 that causes this circle to appear around him. I think the colors were like, was it like blue and yellow or something? And it was like a roulette and whichever one you let go and he would stab, depending on which one you get, it would either stop time, which would turn everything negative colors like white and blue. It would literally turn everything negative. Um, or it'll cause him to get faster or, or ones that would slow him down. So you would get one, like if it was negative, you would get two scrolls that appear on the left, right sides of the screen. It would like block your view so you couldn't see. And that was really bad. That's considered a negative effect. Yeah, I think you also get another negative effect that slows him down, causes him to become slow. Um, so that's basically what that does. It increases good effects and decreases how long you would have to wait for a negative effect to disappear. Because with Ashikaga in particular, with that inscription equipped, if you didn't have it uh, and you got a negative effect, say you hit the roulette wrong and you caused it to get a negative effect where one would block the screen or something, it would last for a while and you would have to wait for it to go away. But if you have this inscription equipped, you don't have to wait as long for the negative effect to disappear. And if you get a good one, like like I said, you have one that freezes time and it turns the colors negative. That's one of my favorite ones. That one will, I think, last longer. So that's interesting. So the next one is Nagamasa, which is called Justice Clad. Let's see if I can find it. I think, I think this is it. If I look, match the kanji here. I think this is it. Um, I'm going to have a hard time kanji reading, so forgive me. So Nagamasa is I. I believe his is Justice Clad. So basically, the charge time of Rikyo... I can't read. Uh, Ririku Soko, which is... I think, what was that one called again? Something about justice. Um, it is shortened, and the duration of full throttle justice, like where he glows completely red, it's called full throttle justice mode. Basically, if you have his inscription equipped and you activate that, it lasts longer. So like the effect is doubled. In addition, the timing window for powering up instantly by timing your button press, that one's insane, when the light is increased. Um, 
it, you, it just automatically levels him up. Um, what it means by that is I've never been able to pull the timing off for Nagamasa. So when you do that one, he gets like these glints on his fingers where he'll spark. And if you hit the button again at that spark point, it can cause him to... Because he maxes out three things. He maxes out his shield will glow red first. Then his sword will glow red and it looks like the blade gets longer. Then the third final one is where he glows red entirely. Um, which which therefore puts him into his full jo uh, throttle justice mode. Uh, with his personal inscription though, it causes that to last longer. And it can actually cause you to go to that state immediately if you time your button presses correctly. I've never been able to freaking do that. It's incredibly ridiculous. I've spent a long time trying to get it to do that. And it's based on the glints, I'm pretty sure. And I've never been able to pull it off. Sounds really retarded. But I've never been able to pull it off, ever. I've tried. I, there might have been only one time I did it, but it's it's hard for me. There's probably somebody thinking, that's easy. Uh, n no. Next one is for Morichika Choshokabe. So it's called, his personal inscription is called Demon Big Brother. What it does is the net that he creates with his Shibaku gains, it gets thorns. So normally he has this, I think it was like an R1 or an R2, um, where he would shove his weapon into the ground and it would cause a net to capture around his enemy. It would just be like a normal net that you could hit him with. However, with this inscription, the net will grow horns on it, like thorns. And it'll cause the person inside that's caught by the net because the net has grown thorns on it. They will continuously take damage while they are captured by it. So basically, again, it causes the Shibaku, um, Shibaku rather, uh, which is a net. Um, it'll gain thorns and it'll deal damage to enemies that are trapped inside and to enemies nearby. Um, some previous uncatchable characters can now be caught. Um, however, the inscription has no effect if you haven't unlocked it yet. So the inscription has no effect if your required skill has not been unlocked. So if you haven't unlocked that R2, putting this inscription on his weapon isn't going to do anything. In order for it to actually work, you have to have already taught him or have it learned, have it unlocked. Have that R2 unlocked and then he'll be able to do that. Um, I think the only uncatchable characters they might be referring to is somebody like maybe Munashige. Uh, maybe Tadakatsu, Munashige, and Yoran Ultimo. Um, they've never really been catchable, even juggleable, because of how big they are. Um, they're big size characters so their hitbox is like too big to be captured. But I don't know if you can capture them with this. I've never tried. Maybe it's possible that you can now. I don't really know, actually. So we're going to go down to one for Matsumune. So this inscription here for Matsumune Date, it's called Six Swords. It's barely self-explanatory. Basically what it does is if you have this inscription on Matsumune's weapon, he will start the stage in six claw style, which will not be cancelled and it will not time out. Or even when you take damage, it won't allow it to cancel. However, it is possible to cancel it by using War Dance, which is what's highlighted in green in English. Um, so basically, he starts the battle with all six swords drawn. The only thing it doesn't tell you, and I'm gonna tell you, doesn't tell you this, but if you put Masamune into his War Dance six class state, it will not cancel when taking damage, because without the inscription, if you have him in War Dance and he gets hit, it will cause him to cancel it. And he'll revert back to one sword. However, if you have this inscription, he will stay in that state even when he does get hit. However, you cannot guard. You cannot guard when Masamune is in war dance state. In six cloth style. When he has all six swords drawn, it is not possible to guard. I'm pretty sure you cannot guard when you have this. So if you have this inscription for him or if you activate it using his R2 skill known as war dance, because that's what it does... If you activate that, keep in mind that you cannot guard as him. So if you take him onto a heaven difficulty leveled stage and you activate this, you cannot guard an incoming attacks. So you might want to be careful with that because you can die. And I have died by doing this. That's why I'm saying learn from someone else's mistake. Um, do not put him in war dance state if you're, not, if you're not confident that you can play well with him because you will die. Horribly. Let me see if I can find it. 
Ooh, I was worried. Oh, I can tell by the Fuma symbol, which is the symbol for wind, Kaze. Uh, that second symbol down there. Oh my god, it's Kaze. Um, I, I learned these characters' inscriptions based on a kanji. I'll focus on one symbol that'll help me remember what it is. It's kind of neat. I don't know if anybody else does that. But that symbol, they also use that symbol for Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. That symbol means wind. <laughs> Oh my god, which is Kaze, Kaze. Anyway, um, so Kotaro Fuma, his personal inscription is called Gale. What it does is his aerial attacks grant a 3 plus hit count and all become critical hits. In addition, his taunting can release tornadoes. So each character has something that they can do by taunting. In Kotaro's case, if you have this inscription on his weapon and you taunt with him, little tornadoes will appear. It's kind of cool. I don't know why I'm so excited about that. What the holy hell. Alright, let me see if I can find it. Um, I think this is it. Like I said, I'm having to read the kanji and I'm kind of far away from my TV and it's very tiny. I hope this is it. Um... If it is, this is uh, Matabe Goto. I actually like him. Some people don't. I think he's cool. So Matabe Goto. Um, his personal inscription is called Grudge Blade. What it does, all of Matabe's attacks become critical hits while his weapon is in the air after being thrown. However, he takes 1.5 more damage than he normally would. Um, I want to make sure that that's actually him, though. No, this is him. I'm sorry. That symbol is wrong. That's not him. This is him here. I got it wrong. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, this is him right here. I'm having a hard time with this kanji. I knew this was going to be a bad idea. It'll be translated correctly in the description. Sorry again. Uh, it, it's just it's been a while since I've played this game and trying to remember the characters' names in kanji form is a little difficult for me considering I don't play as everybody so uh, this is him you can tell by the 1.5 down there that I mentioned so Mat this is him right here so this is Matabe's and that's what it does so the next one is called strongest and it's for Honda Tarakatsu Tarakatsu Honda um, I don't play as Tarakatsu honestly oh I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to find this um, the kanji if I remember correctly it's it's like a little swiggly thingy. Ah, uh, it should be blue. I think this is it. Is it though? Ah, uh, mm, like I said, these kanjis are tiny, and I'm having to look at it kind of funnily. Ah, uh, crap. Uh, I think because I some of these kanjis I actually know. For instance, this is Masamune. Um, I mean Sonori, sorry. Um, damn, these kanjis are so tiny. I think this one is his. If it's not, then forget what I'm saying. So Tadakatsu's his personal inscription is called Strongest. What it does is the time limits are removed from his R2 specials, like all of his R2 skills. In addition, his HP is no longer depleted while he is in Danki Keitai, his electromagnetic mode. The inscription again has no effect if you haven't taught that skill to him or have it unlocked. That's all his personal inscription does. I'm not sure if that is his symbol. That might be someone else. Um, because it looks a little different. The symbol I'm looking for, um, I, it, like, it has like a little, uh, like a little swiggly thingy. Oh, that's Munishige. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. Because I'm not seeing that symbol anywhere else. I know exactly what it looks like. And I'm trying to look for it. And I don't, I don't see that anywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure that this one is it. I'm pretty sure this is him. Anyway though. The next one is for Naotori. And hers is called Respect Women. Um, I'm looking for the woman symbol. The woman is... It's Ona. Ona is woman in Japanese. It's... Like a, let me see here if I could find it. Um, I probably passed it because I made it. Uh, looking for that woman symbol. There it is. 
All right, so hers deals double damage against men, but half damage against women. So you know what's funny about this inscription? I ha I put this on Nella Torah and before. So there's this theory that people keep on trying to say that Kenshin is actually a woman, and you know why? Because with this crest, with this personal inscription, I mean, if you have this inscription on a weapon for Nella Torah and you go onto a stage where Kenshin is and you attack him, it does half damage to him, even though he's a man. So that's why people keep on saying that Kenshin is actually a woman. I don't know how true that is. I refuse to believe that shit. But um, that's what this inscription is supposed to do. It, do. it does two times damage to men and half damage. That's what that 0 0.5 means. So two times damage to men, half damage to women. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but okay. So moving on to Mitsunari... So Mitsunari Ishida, he's one of my favorites, his personal inscription is called Dark King. So what it does is his skills, his R2 skills. So Zanmetsu, which means execution, can be activated quickly. In addition, his Kyoko, which is reverence in English, can be used with no time limit. And it starts at the highest level from the start. And again, the effect has no effect if you have not taught those skills to him. So putting the inscription on his weapon will not teach those to him. The only way the inscription works is if you have those R2 skills learned. If they are learned already, then this inscription kind of makes those abilities stronger. Like I said, um, his Zanmetsu, which is execution where he pushes them onto the, onto the ground with the, with the sheath of his sword, he pushes it into their shoulder blade, like their shoulder. With the sheath of a sword, he pushes it into their shoulder and pushes them on the ground and he holds them down. And then he draws the sword really slowly and slashes it across their throat. That's why it's called execution. Uh, that's what that one does. His Kyoko one, which is reverence, allows him, like his eyes glow red and he puts the sword, like he holds the sheath, like his whole sword, he holds it in his mouth like a demon and he runs really quickly. That's what that one is. Um... Basically, that one, if you don't have this inscription for Kyoko, you have to build it up slowly, and it sucks. I hate it. It doesn't work it for me ever. Um, as he attacks, like, you launch it, you push the, his R2 button to launch the skill, and you have to quickly keep on attacking enemies around him to get it to build up. However, if you put this inscription on his weapon, you don't have to do that anymore. It starts at full power. Um, so that's actually a really good inscription to have if you care about that, that is. Um, the next one for Kasuga, um, is this, this is it here, um, it's, yeah, this is it. So Kasuga's is called Sword of Bishamonten. So basically what Kasuga's does is she starts the battle in her Mitsugu Nijikage mode, basically that's where she gets the little rainbow, uh, clones. Um, so, in addition, though, it cannot be cancelled. It's like a long-time permanent thing, because normally without a character's personal inscription, their personal inscriptions basically vamp up their R2 skills. That's really all they ever do. And if you don't have this inscription, if you activate that, because that's one of her R2 skills, which is Mitsugu Nijikage, and if you activate it, she will glow with rainbow colors. However, if she takes damage, it would be cancelled. But, if you put the inscription on her and then activate it, it won't be cancelled ever. Um, so basically the charge time for her Mitsugi uh, Murahitaro is shortened. It's another one of her R2 skills. Um, and that's really what this does, what the inscription does for her. So she starts the battle in her Mitsugi Nijikage mode, which won't be cancelled. Um, it can be cancelled though if you activate Mitsugi Nijikage again. So that's what's cool about this. Um, some of the characters' inscriptions will put them in a certain state. Like Masamune's, for instance, will start the stage with, with all six swords drawn. But you can cancel it by, aka, activating it again. And that's what, um, that's what hers does. It'll cancel it if you activate it again. So the next one is for um, Kojiro Katakura. I like Kojiro. He's cool. Um, I believe... Is this Kojiro? Kojiro? Yeah. Okay, so Kojiro Katagura, um, his personal inscription is called Humanity and Justice. So cool. So basically, he starts the battle in his Goku Satsu mode. It's kind of like where he 
ch he changes completely. Like, he gets one strand of hair that hangs down in front of his face, and all of his attacks become drastically different. And when he runs, he he holds the sword in his right hand, and he drags it on the so on the ground, and it creates, like, a trail of sparks. Um, like, he changes. He, he just becomes incredibly psycho. Um, I actually like that mode, though, so... Um, so basically, he starts the battle in his Goku Satsu mode, which will not be cancelled by a time limit or by taking damage. However, you can cancel it again by activating his Mugetsu Goku Satsu, which is his R2 special skill. I think it's like the second or third one. Forget which. Um, so you can cancel that if you don't want him to stay in that mode anymore. You can cancel it by activating that R2, and it'll cancel it and put him back to uh, what he normally is. So the next one is for Hideaki Kobayakawa. I don't care for this character. I've never used him ever. He's supposed to be the adoptive son. He's Takakage Kobayakawa's adoptive son. And he's Motonari Mori's nephew. Um, he's not related to any one of them by blood. Takakage never had any actual biological children. And he adopted Hideaki because he was... Takakage was given to the Kobayakawa family by Motenari when he was a child. Um, it was like some kind of a treaty between the clans, between the Kobayakawa and Mori clans. They asked Motenari to give him their son as a sign of trust or something to form an alliance or form a pact, you know, a bond with the, the Tyler families together. So, because he had no daughters, he couldn't marry a daughter into their family, so he gave them his son, and that's why Takakage's last name is Kobayakawa, even though he's Motenari Mori's son. Um, that's why his last name is Kobayakawa instead of Mori. There's some lore for you. Um, I like Takakage, he's one of my favorites, holy shit, but this is not Samurai Warriors. So, let me see if I can find his, like I said, I think, I think this is it. Um... Yeah, this is it here. I, I could be wrong. But I think that I'm pretty sure this is it. I have the kanji written down super big. I wrote them out uh, when I was translating sh stuff earlier. Um, so Hideaki Kabayakawa. So basically, with his is called Gourmet. So his HP can be recovered with the Mugo Mugo Kingo. That's one of his R2s. In addition, uh, eating while already at full HP will guarantee high quality food. That sounds really ridiculous. So like if his life is already full, it's at max, you haven't taken damage yet, and you and you have this on, basically when you pick up other health items, they'll be like greater quality. I guess you can get more life back with them. I don't know about that. So the next one is for Kanbei Kuroda. I don't play as Kanbei either. Oh my god. Um... His is called, uh, Rolling Around. I'm rolling around at the speed of sound. Got places to go. Why am I on Matsu? Okay, I am. I was on Matsu. Um, the symbol is repeated twice. I should have been able to find it by now. It's like this weird little symbol that's, um, it's repeated twice. Is this it? No, that's Maria. Oh, crap. This is why I hated this. It's a symbol that's repeated twice in a row. There we go. There it is. Um, so Kame Kurodos, his is called Rolling Around. So his skills improve turning. Um, so like, because he was one of those characters that would literally turn into a ball. Cause he, he has his wrist chained by a ball. He was in prison by Mori for doing something. Um... He literally rolls around, and I guess you couldn't really control him too well. It was, like, hard to control or something. So, basically, skills involving turning have an increased number of rotations. The final step of Hanyaku Mawari won't cause dizziness, because some... It got little silly things that happened to the characters. So, basically, if you would activate his uh, Hanyaku Mawari, he would kind of act like he was dizzy, and you couldn't control him. I guess that's that no longer happens. Uh, bombs can be placed during evade, so when he evades, a bomb shows up. And his Waza White uh, Tenjite won't be cancelled even when crashing into a wall. Again, the inscription doesn't have effect if you haven't taught that to him or unlocked it. Um, so that's great. So let's go back to Maria. <laughs> Maria! Alright, so Maria killed Goku. She's cool. Um, so her personal inscription is called Allure. Like, I don't, I don't. Anyway, so hers is called Allure. 
basically the duration of her i'm gonna screw this word up it's one of her r2s i think it's something about a car <laughs> so basically oh is it is it oh shibe shimobe kurama or Kur kurama um yeah kurama um basically it's increased in addition though the enemies that she has changed into spinning tops they can become stronger so basically, I think it's if, if you hold down her triangle, she would uh, throw out pieces of cloth that would wrap around the enemies and cause them to spin around. However, that turns them into spinning tops. It's like an old kid's toy. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. I used to have one, a spinning top. It was like this little red thing that was shaped weirdly and you could spin it and it would spin. They used to call them spinning tops. Anyway, um, basically they, it becomes stronger. I guess they spin faster. I have no idea. I really don't. So we're looking for KG. Oh, I don't know why I'm making that sound. Oh, uh, let's see if I can find it. I I just can't see where I'm sitting at. Um, is this? No, that's not it. Anyway, um, let me see if I can find the kanji here. I I know what the crest looks like. It has like a little square in his name. I think that's Yukimura. Um. He has a, a circle like that. I think this. I think this is it. I think this is KG. Um, so KG Maida. So his is called Kabuki. Basically, what it does is the input time for Koi no uh, Kakehiki or is Hita Mobore is extended, and Koi no Kakehiki will start from the first step from the previous used move. That's really kind of confusing to understand. Um, in addition, though, his taunts will attract nearby enemies who will break into a dance. So if he taunts near enemies, it'll cause them to kind of dance around funnily. Yeah. I never really paid attention to uh, move cancels and all that other fancy stuff. I never really cared for that. Never really did any of that. That's why I was like, what the hell? Um, yeah, that's what that does. Let's see. The next one, that's Matsu. Um, because Keiji and Matsu and, um... Toshidie are close to each other. And the next one is Toshidie. That's why I mentioned him. Um, uh, I'm going to try to see if I can find him here. Um, I should be able to tell by the kanji that he has a square in his name. When I say by square, where I was just at, that second kanji on the left, you see how it, like, it looks like a little square? Um, that's how I remembered it. Um... And I think this is yeah this is it here here see the see the square 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 that that's their last name that's Maeda so it's Maeda okay um so Toshire Maeda his is called full stomach so Toshire starts the battle in a strengthened state as though he has used Meishi no kan, uh, Kangeki and it won't be cancelled so Meishi no Kangeki is one of his R2 skills um my freaking mic cord keeps getting caught on my pocket and it keeps pulling it and I'm pretty sure the mic is picking up every damn sound that probably sounds horrible anyway Matsu's hers is called guardian of the home so animal attacks deal more damage so some of her um, her wolf and the bear and the birds um, I believe those animals will cause more attack damage so the next one is Matsunaga Hisahide. He's one of my favorites. So his is called Blazing Treasure. Uh, let me look at the kanji here. Let's see if I can find that. Um, do, 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 do. I should be able to tell by the names, but I haven't played as him in a long time. So forgive me. I think this this is him right here. You can also tell by the color behind the symbols. The color uh, is coherent to the characters. Like this is Nagamasa, I think. The red and white, like the black and gray here, is supposed to be him. You, I'm supposed to be able to tell by the color on the background. But like I said, I'm sitting kind of distance from my TV and I can't see too well. Um, so his is called Blazing Treasure, and he starts the battle in his or starts a stage, and is Homori mode, which won't be canceled through a time limit. However, it is cancelable. It is possible to cancel it again by activating it again, because it's one of his R2 skills. Homurai basically he, he gets like flames on the edge of the screen. You get like fire that appears everywhere. That's what his Homurai mode is. So the next one I believe is Yoshiaki Mogami. Some of these symbols I know by heart, so it's kind of fun that I can react to them quicker. So he, I don't play as Yoshiaki, but I know what his looks like. 
Um, so basically, his personal inscription is called Resting Fox. So what it does, Taunting becomes playing dead, so he literally falls on the ground. And during that time, his HP and Basra gauges will slowly refill. However, if his HP and Basra gauges are full, a normal taunt will be performed instead. So basically, if his life and his Basra gauge is low, if you activate this, like if you taunt with him with this, he'll fall on the ground and pretend like he's playing dead. And his life and boss or gauges will slowly refill. So that's kind of neat. So let's go over to my Modernari. Because I kept talking about him a whole awful lot. I like Modernari so much. Sorry. Um, so Modernari's, his personal inscription is called Scheming God. So it cannot be, uh, he cannot be staggered when attacked while setting up his traps. Because he's a trap character. I don't mean trap as in he's a female. I mean trap as in he literally launches traps. Um, in addition, the duration of his traps is doubled, so normally when you'd be holding down his R1 or like forming rings and stuff like that, if you were attacked in the middle of that, it would cause it to be cancelled. However, if you have his personal inscription on a weapon and then you start activating a lot of his other attacks that are trap based, which they basically all are, like I said, he's a trap character, Basically, while he's in the middle of setting up something, if he gets hit, he won't be staggered as where normally he would be. So, that's cool. Let me look for the heaven. It's not a he heaven symbol. Um, I should know it when I see it. This, here, this, here. Here we go. This is Nobunaga Oda. So, Nobunaga's personal inscription is called Great Demon. What it does is the power of his Hamesu no Sudo, or Shodo, is strengthened and Nobunaga's movement speed is increased. The time limit and health drain effects are removed and the inscription again has no effect if the required skills have not been acquired. So basically, if you haven't have that R2, if it's not unlocked and you haven't unlocked it for him, then his personal inscription isn't going to do anything. Because normally... His Hametsu no Shudo, I believe when you would activate that, his strength and movement speed would get faster. However, his life would slowly deplete over time. So with this personal inscription, it, it gets rid of that and his life no longer drains. Um, so that's cool. So let's go down to Oichi. Because, you know, we can't do the Demon King without the Demon Queen. Um... So, Oichi's personal inscription is called Demon Hands. What it does is her Hibiki, or I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I think it's Hibikemu no Uta. Basically, it won't be cancelled as long as the miasma doesn't dissipate. And again, the inscription has no effect if you haven't taught that R2 skill to her. Um, basically, it allows one of her R2s to last longer um, than it normally would. So the next character is Yoshitsugu Otani. I don't play as Yoshitsugu here. I like him a lot in Samurai Warriors, but I don't use him here, unfortunately. I just never really cared to. Um, I believe this is him right here. So I don't know why his would be orange. He's represented by red and white, but whatever. So Yoshitsugu Otani's personal inscription is called Prime Star. What it does is the duration of Hoshimi Hajime and the speed that it spreads are increased. The firing speed of Ugatsu no Hachiyo is improved. In addition, using a Chikaruna Shoibo is no longer depletes his HP. It's kind of like the same thing with Nobunaga. Again, it doesn't mean anything if you don't got those R2s unlocked for him. Um, so again, that's what that does. Uh, Hoshimi Hajime, the speed is faster and uh, Ugatsuna Hachio is improved like the fire at the speed of he has like these orbs like these white pearl balls that he shoots at people um I guess you can shoot them faster is that what that is so the next one is Soren Otomo I don't play a Soren either so oh my god um Soren Soren it's kind of like a little jagged thing that kind of looks like a ladder no, that's not it. Uh, kind of looks like a ladder. I think this is this is Soren right here. I think. So basically, Soren's personal inscription is called Believer. Um, what it does is Soren is able to use all of the abilities of his followers, irrespective of their type. However, he takes three times more damage. 
The time limit is removed from So Anata no Omokage. And again, the inscription doesn't mean anything if you don't got those R2s unlocked. So basically, Soren is, he summons two little bearded angels to capture enemies. And whatever enemy he captures, he can use their abilities. However, I don't know if that means he can capture main characters and do that. Because that would be incredibly broken. Like, I can't summon a bearded angel, capture someone like Oichi, and start using dark shadow powers. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> It'd be funny if that were the case, but I don't think so. Um, next character is uh, Mago Ichi Saika. I, she's one of those characters where I like hate <laughs> like I kind of like her a part of me wants to like her but at the same time a part of me really just kind of doesn't um, it's probably because of the way she treated um, KG she treated him like crap in my opinion like he really liked her and everything and she was just like no I hate when good guys get treated like crap by stupid bitches I hate to say it like that but yeah so um, I do like her though um, God, my vision is, I'm just, I think this is her, I can tell by the green and red, um, brown, whatever. So, Magoichi Saika, um, her real name is actually Sayaka, but there's this thing where people to the Saika clan, they must always have a leader by the name of Magoichi, rather if their leader is a man or a woman, the leader's name of the Saika clan must always be Magoichi. So when the previous leader died, she took on his place. She took his place and she became Maguichi. Even though her real name is Sayaka. I don't know what her real last name is. It probably is Saika. So it's Sayaka Saika. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, she goes by Maguichi, but her real name is Sayaka. But anyway, Maguichi Saika. So her personal inscription is called Raven. It's not like a three-legged crow like the Yatagarasu. It's actually just called Raven. I don't know why. Um, so basically what her personal inscription does is Magnum shots become rockets and her range of the shotgun is extended and the machine gun increases her hit count. In addition, the number of, gr of grenades in the Kadan Hiranjaku fire bullet wax wing, that's one of her R2s, it's, it's increased. So like the number of grenades, she gets more. Um, again, it doesn't mean anything if you haven't unlocked those skills for her. So that's really what it does. So her Magnum rocket shots, they become rockets instead of what they normally are. Um, the range of the shotgun is increased. And her machine gun, she gets more hit counts, so she can do more damage, I suppose. And she gets more grenades during one of her R2s. So that's cool. So we're going to move on to Yukimura, which is called Hot-Blooded. So Yukimura... Yuki Mura Sonata. So basically, his is called Hot Blooded, and what it does is he starts a battle, starts a stage, and his Naketsu Daifunka, which basically is his fired up mode. It's where he kind of goes up and down three times, where like he looks like he's squatting, where he goes one, two, three. I, I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, it looks like he's working out or something. Um, so basically that's what that is called and it causes him to glow with fire. Like his weapons would glow with fire. Um, so basically it won't be cancelled through a time limit or by taking damage. It's also possible to cancel that again by activating his Naketsu Daifunka. Um, and Naketsu, I actually like that. Um, anyway, the next one is for Sasuke Saratobi, it's kind of really coincidental that those two would be close to each other considering the fact that Sasuke serves him, so that's straight up ridiculous. Ah, Sasuke, where are you? Um, I'm gonna try to find it here. Um, Sasuke, what the hell? It's like a, his is like a little R symbol for a ninja. Oh god. Okay, let me see if I can find it here. Give me just a second. I had found it earlier. I, um, I told myself to remember where it was because I was going to be coming up against it. Um, I think a little R symbol. Is that it? No. No, it's Maria. I'm looking at the other little kanji, not the actual bigger kanji for the names. There, there's the R symbol. It looks like an R to me. 
Um, looks like an R above the symbol for heart, which is Kokoro. So that's how I taught myself to remember it. I know that makes no sense, right? It looks like an R, and then the symbol on the left has three lines. That's how. That's what I was looking for. So basically, his is called Phantom Ninja. All it does is Sasuke gets um, summoned shadow clones when he is dashing, jumping, or evading. It's actually really neat. Um, so if you have this inscription on his weapon and you da dash to the left or the right, like guard, and then move the joystick to the left or the right, he'll get, like, shadow clones. Like, dark black silhouettes of himself will appear and, and do damage to nearby enemies. That's actually a cool one to have. I would have it, because as soon as he runs... If he dashes, jumps, or evades, he's accompanied by those. And it actually allows you to hit enemies by not even necessarily hitting them. You don't even need to hit them. You can just run right into them and it does damage. It's kind of really funny. Um, The next one that I remember that one because I kept picking it earlier thinking that that's what that was. And that's not at all what that was. Um, the next one is for uh, Senno Riku. Um, where I just, I was just talking about that symbol because I literally remember seeing it multiple times and I kept confusing it for another character, this one right here. Um, so this one is for Senno Riku. His personal inscription is called Vessel Strength. What it does is the number of enemies which can be drawn in is doubled and the range becomes wider. In addition, the duration is extended and locked on enemies grant a plus two hit count. So that's for a lot. Of, he is one of those characters that fight with fans and he's kind of all majestic and all over the place like a bird. Um, yeah, so the next one is for Katsui. Katsui is one of my favorite characters. Holy crap. That's why I know his by heart. That's why I immediately went to it. Um, so Katsui Shibata, his is called Four Layers. His is very obvious. It's the whole Shesho Sheer Plane. So charging up a special shear plane once will now go straight to the highest level and it won't be cancelled by taking damage. However, Shesho will still appear, uh, disappear at a normal rate once the time limit is reached. Basically what that means, I believe if you hold down was it like the square button, he would twirl his reverse naginata above his head, he would twirl it, and as he would twirl it, uh, you would get these rings that would appear around the weapon, there was three of them, it would, it would you, as you were charging it, three rings would slowly appear. It would go one, then two, then three. And as the power goes down, uh, like this whirlwind that looks like wind would appear on his body. It would go down from his head to his feet. Like it, it would show that the power was degrading, like he was losing it over time. It's not a permanent thing. There's not a way to make it permanent. But basically, each of his attacks would become faster and they would get up to three additional slashes that would accompany them. It's the same thing with Casco's as well. Um, her um, Nijikage mode um, would allow her to get shadow clones, a rainbow shadow clones that would accompany her attacks as were normally they wouldn't. So each of the characters' personal um, inscriptions do a lot of stuff compared to what you think they would do. That's not actually said or listed here. Um, the next one is for Sakon Shima. I believe I have it selected correctly. It's funny, he's a side by side. So, um, Sakon's is called Double Wager. So what it does is the duration of all of Sakon's R2 skills is extended. In addition, using Koi Koi once will take it to the third level. Um, that's really all it does. Again, it doesn't do anything if you don't got those um, R2 skills unlocked. The next one is for Yoshihiro Shimazu. I personally don't use him either. His is called Jigen. I think. Mm, that's not it, is it? Yeah, Jigen. Isn't that the name of his sword? Jigen Ryu or something? I remember him saying that a lot. He used to say, oh, Jigen Ryu. And what the hell? Uh, I can't seem to find these inscriptions that I'm looking for. It's making this so much harder. I like, oh my god. Um. Uh, here it is. This is it. I remembered it because it was like a little square that kind of looked like, looked like an R, like a T. The second, the first symbol was like a T, and the set the, the the second one was like an R. 
So basically his is called Jigen, so Yoshihiro's R2 abilities can be triggered more quickly and his movement speed is increased while he is using Jigen Ryu, Tenrai, that's why I mentioned that, I see I remembered. Um, again, it doesn't mean anything if you don't got that R2 in lock. It's his first R2, I believe, which is called Jigen Ryu Tenrai. Um, that's what his does. So the next character is for Mune Shige. So Mune Shige Tachibana, his is called Raikiri. What it does is he starts the battle in electric fight mode and it won't be cancelled and guarding becomes possible as before, like the same thing with Masamune. Um, you could not guard while he was in that state, but now you can. In addition, by using certain skills or by taunting, lightning will appear around Mune Shige. Well, it'll appear around him. So the next one is for uh, Shingen, which is uh, God of Battle. Let's see if I can find his... I don't play as him either, so trying to go through and find his symbol might be a little abysmalish. I No, that's not it. Oh, crap. Here we go again. I can never seem to find these symbols, especially when I know what it looks like. Like, I know what it looks like. I'm looking at it right in front of my face, and when it comes time to actually find it... Um... I can't. No, oh God, where is it? I don't know. Is that's not it? Maybe it is. I think this is it. I think this is Shingen's. So his is God of Battle. So the charge time of all skills and special skills is halved. In addition, the duration of his furring Kazan mode is doubled. That's what that does. So the next one is Hanbei Takenaka. Uh, his is called Wise One. Hanbei. Here we go. Here's his Hanbei's. I know Hanbei's name by heart as well. Oh my god. So what Hanbei's does is he starts the battle in Ikari will Komote mode, which won't be cancelled through a time limit or by taking damage. It's also possible to recancel that by again activating the R2 skill that it, it is um, linked to. Ikari will Komote, that's one of his R2s. I forget which one. I have him right here. So Ikari, um, Ikari will Komate, because I put mines in a different order. I have that set as his third one. This is Ikari will Komate right here. I don't know if that is the first one you learn for him. I think it's, I think it's the second one you learn for, for him. I don't know. It's been a while, so I forget actually. So that's Hanbei's, um, that's what Hanbei's does. So the next one is for Tenkai. Oh, I remember seeing his. His was his was close nearby. It, this is is this this is this is it. I think I think. Yeah, it is because I remember the little X on the bottom. Also, his symbol is similar to Oichi's. Um, yeah, that, that it's it's symbol. Yeah, it's not really, but whatever. Um, so Tenkai's is called Merciful Eye. So Tenkai will no longer stagger if he's attacked while using the. Kokatsu Teki uh, Kyushu and his HP absorption is doubled. In addition, his Basra and Style Gauges will refill and once his intoxication level has reached its maximum duration is extended. Like, and once his intoxication level has reached its maximum limit, its duration is extended. So like it gets longer. That's what she said. Anyway, um, the next character is Ieyasu. Um, Ieyasu Itokugawa is called Light of the East. Um, where, is that it? I think I, I think I went to it automatically. Yeah, I think this is Ieyasu. Basically, he starts the battle with his hood on, which is cool, I guess, and it won't be cancelled, and the time taken to charge his skills and his specials is shortened, so... He has this one R2 that I really like that forms his symbol, like his family crest, the Tokugawa crest. It forms it underneath him like a bright yellow circle. And if you stretch it out as far as you can, let it get really big and then let it go. It like puts like this giant light beam energy that shoots up and it, it, it hits anyone that's around him. It's always been one of my favorite R2s. It's the only one I really like for him a lot. He also has one where he gets Tadakatsu's spear and can throw it at people. So that's cool, I guess. The next one is called Conquering King, um, which is for Hideyoshi Toyotomi. It's his is like um, it's kind of like a symbol like that. That's Mitsunari, so it's similar. See that? See that same symbol there? The second symbol. 
it's similar to Mitsunari's. Why is it the same? It is the same, but why? Uh, it's not important. <laughs> so confused all of a sudden. It's the same symbol. If you look at the second kanji symbol down there, see how it's the same? It's the same symbol. What is that? <laughs> Nani Ekode. Anyway, so basically, um, Hideyoshi's is called Conqueror King. So what it does is Hideyoshi's grab attacks can be chained together ten times in a row. Using the same technique consecutively or Chimi Naraku can be trig can trigger a finisher. So like you can insta-kill people with that grab. Basically, he, I think he grabs them, twirls in the air, and then slams them back down. I think that's an insta-kill move now. <laughs> it sounds so stupid when I explain it like that. Um... The next character is Tsuruhime. Um, so Tsuruhime, this is hers right here. I remember hers because she's represented by a crane and that second symbol was bent funny. I always remembered that as being a crane. That's how I, I teach myself how to remember the kanji symbols by referring it to other crap. Um, that's how I teach myself to learn. I memorize what it looks like and if I, like, I'm like, oh, that looks like a crane. So when I see that symbol, I'm like, oh, it's a crane and I know what it is. So, Suruhime, she doesn't have a last name. She belongs to the Iyoko, Iyokono, uh clan. So, I, I've always called her Suruhime Iyo. But that's not actually what she's called. Suruhime. So, her Murio no Ya won't be cancelled unless Suruhime takes damage or mounts a horse. That's I think that's where you put the arrows around her. Um, that's the one I use all the time. It actually... What's cool about that one, too, is if you put it around her, um, it protects her for one... Up to three hits, actually. Uh, normally it used to be one hit and it would disappear immediately. So if you put the red arrows around her and they would spin around her and she would get hit once, it would automatically cancel it. But I believe it lasts for three hits. So if you put that around her, she can take three hits before it cancels or before she actually truly starts receiving damage. Um, so that one's cool. So hers is called Oracle. I don't know if I said that. So the next one is Kenshin Iwasugi's. His is called God of War. Let's see, Kenshin would be have like a cool ice color to it. Um, let's see. His is right here. It should be close to where Ka Kasuka's here. So he's yeah, this is Kenshin. I know what his name looks like. That Uwasugi. I, I memorized what his kanji name is because it looks like an upside down T next to an E. So yeah, that this is Kenshin. So his is called God of War. What it does is the duration of God region status is extended. In addition, though, his movement speed is increased during God region, and all of his attacks gain ice elemental properties. So all of his attacks gain ice. Even if you have his elemental inscription on his weapon, this this personal inscription will allow his attacks to gain ice as if though you had an element inscription even though you don't. I do have it, so it doesn't really mean any difference to me, but basically that's what it does. So the final one is called Dear God for Shisuke and Yamanaka. I remembered what his is because that first symbol is Yama, which means mountain. So that's how I taught myself to remember that kanji for him. Also, the second symbol is very, very similar to Hanbei. See how Hanbei has the second symbol in his name? It's the exact same as Shikinosuke's. It's literally the same symbol because Naka is the same. Yamanaka, Takanaka. That symbol is Naka. <laughs> that's what that means. That's how I taught myself to remember. It's very similar. They, that's why they have the same symbol in their name. Because the Naka. So, Yama Naka and then Take Naka. So, Shisuke Yama Naka. So, his personal inscription is called Deer God. What it does is Oyo-san, which is the deer, which is a female, by the way. Even the Oyo-san means old man. Anyway... Oyo-san starts the battle powered up mode, which won't be cancelled, and Shikainosuke's attack power is increased without his armor, because in that mode, the armor transfers to the deer, and you become barehanded. He doesn't have his weapons, like the little mallets. He's literally, he fights with a bell. He has a little bell that he has on tied to his waist. He literally takes it off and twists it into people's faces. He spins it at them. So he fights with a little two little tiny bells that look like cherries, and it's ridiculous. Um, so basically... His attack power is increased without his army. In, adi in addition, it's possible to play as Oyo-san for longer when using Aitsuga Boku De Boku Ha. That's one of the R2s. Um, you get to play as a deer for a little bit. 
using the it's it makes no sense really um but in a way it does so basically that is what his do and that is all personal inscriptions and what they do i know i kind of butchered it a little bit but it's hard for me to see because i'm so far away from my screen and i was trying to translate in the kanji in this game is tiny anyway like it's really hard for me to see that anyway though um that's what that does. Oh, let me um, let me change something here really quick. So basically, that's how you do that. I'm gonna go here real quick. Oh my god! Because I kept talking about a few. I can't show all of theirs because I don't have the personal inscriptions for everyone. Oh my god, don't make me even lose my mind right now. Um, no, I think it was the third one. So basically, um, that's how you do that. Um, I need to... I was gonna go down and turn the sound off. I could have did it from that other menu. Yeah, it's the first one. I'm gonna turn it all off for just a second because I cannot talk over them talking over me. Um, but that's all of their personal inscriptions. And that's how you do that. I could have turned that off from the menu where I was just at. I just did it wrong, so I'm in a hurry. I've been doing this video for a long time and I don't know how long it's been. So basically, um, his Ikari will Komate mode, um, I believe, is this. So if you have his personal inscription, he starts it the battle like this so if I were to start a stage he starts like this already glowing and it doesn't cancel basically he just gets like darkness you see how his blades glowing red when I'm attacking that redness is basically it's like a darkness power um, that's all it does like his his powers uh, become dark so when he swings you see that red that's everywhere that's really obvious that you cannot miss that's what it does but if I were to cancel that uh, it canceled itself see it only lasts for a little bit but if I had his personal inscription, I would start a stage like this, and I could cancel it again by doing this. See, now when I attack normally, see, now it now it becomes bluish purple. See, now I now he's not equipped by darkness anymore. So that's what the, um, that does. The Niketsu Daifunka mode for Yukimura, um, I forgot which one I had it. Which Which skill was it? It's the third one. Um, it's this. So basically he goes, he charges like this, and when he get, when it's at full power, he stops it himself, and you see how he's kind of glowing with, like, a fire wave all the way around him? So he kind of gets, like, this glowing essence of power around him. So that's what that does. Um, it doesn't last very long, it immediately faded when I went to go move. Um, go into the ceiling! Woo! So that's what that does. Um, this is his taunt. This is like, look, it looks like he's exercising. That's what I was talking about. Um, but basically that's what this does. So with his personal inscription, if I had it on this weapon, he would start the battle like this, glowing with red flames like he's a psycho. Um, so that's what it does. I don't know why when I look at Yukimura, I automatically think of Johnny Young Bosch and I start thinking of Ichigo. Because in the English version for Senkaku Basura 3 Samurai Heroes, Johnny Young Bosch voiced Yukimura. He also voiced Yukimura in Samurai Warriors as well. It was kind of cool to me that he voiced Yukimura in both series. I feel like Johnny Young Bosch's voice fits Yukimura perfectly. And when I think of Yukimura in English, I always think of him with a Johnny Young Bosch voice. It's like permanently etched into my mind. When I think of Yukimura, I think of Johnny Young Bosch. I don't know about anybody else. Um, but again, that is what those do. That's each character's personal inscriptions. I would go through and try to show them for each character, but I just simply cannot. Normally, when I do a moveset cover for them, which I always do, um, I show that. That's when I show that. I get it unlocked first and then I show it. So if you want to see what the character's personal inscriptions are, hopefully if you look it down through my playlist, you can find a video where I covered each of their moves. And when I do a moveset cover, I always show what the personal inscription is and I always show what it does. I can't show it here because I don't have it for all characters. 
I don't have Yukimura's or Hanbei's personal inscriptions. I like the way Han and Yukimura is just in front of me. Um, so I can't, unfortunately, show theirs. The only ones I really have is like Kasuka's and Suruhime's. Um, I have a few other characters, but those are the only two I really care to get right now. So I unfortunately can't even show that. Um, but again, thanks for watching if you did. I'm Sovereign Sage. Again, I do feel like I butchered this video. I tried to do my best with it though. Um, so that's all characters' personal inscriptions. I also did another video showing normal weapon inscriptions. So if you haven't seen that one, I also did a translation on that as well.